It's two, maybe three, I believe, but a great paranoia from Weeded to try to keep things back. Nonetheless, Cory get, takes care of Weeded, gets a second one. Cory with three, it's a bloodbath. Phase rip and set apart. What's up, guys? It's Cory from the Phase Valorant team. We say I go by the name Cory inside a game, which is the same name as my real life name. And uh, today we're gonna learn how to aim like me. This is my settings for kind of basically my mouse in general. Uh, obviously you want to have 69 if you're doing native and obviously I play Valorant so I gotta have my game profile like Valorant so the sensitivity is the same. Uh, this is what I'm using currently. I'm known to change my sensitivity a lot but as of recently this one has actually felt pretty uh, natural to me so it's most likely going to be something I'm going to stick on for a long time. Uh, the field of view in Valorant is obviously 103. My Aim down sight sensitivity in obviously in aim labs and in Valorant you should make it the same as you do. So for me, it's 0.9. Uh, ADS field of view. I feel like this should be the same as as uh, Valorant, but honestly, I don't really ADS that much inside of aim lab. So this one is honestly doesn't really matter that much. These I'm pretty sure this is for controller, but raw input for sure. You should have this on if anything, because it stops like uh, mouse acceleration. So for graphics, I actually use full screen windowed instead of just full screen exclusive. I mean, if you want to have like better frames and everything, you should use exclusive. But I use windowed because I use I play this on stream, so it's easy to tab in and out. Uh, outside of that, I mean, you should have this off if you want your on normal display. The latency makes your game better. Um, your frame rate limiter. Honestly, you could just keep it at whatever frames you get when you play. So I could just keep it around here just because it stays consistent. Uh, for me, obviously, I want my the fastest I can get my quality, and then I have everything else off, so I get more frames when I play. Uh, so this is what I'm rock with crosshair. I don't really have. I mean, you could just use like these, like the first like three numbers of it. it like the rest of these numbers probably are so minuscule, it doesn't matter too much. I kind of just like mess with it to kind of make a crosshair that I'm kind of using in Valorant at the time. But this is what I'm rocking with right now. Uh, I'm a big fan of Cyan. Um, this is what I use in Valorant. I'm not gonna if I'm if I'm not using cyan, I'm probably using green for the most part. But I think this is probably the best thing I've used for at least aim mobs and Valorant. So in order to see improvement for myself, uh, I actually I changed up a lot of my stuff, and I'm a big advocate of you should change your stuff to find what really clicks for you. Whatever if it doesn't really click right away for you, and you end up putting like a certain amount of time into it, then it might not be the right fit. Personally, I've gone through a ton of setups. A ton of setups, a ton of setups, a ton of setups. As of right now, I'm sitting on probably the most comfortable setup that I've, that I've used in a long time. And I, I use Aim Labs and I play a lot of obviously Valorant to kind of get myself comfortable and or see if my setup feels good. I have used Aim Labs to help find my, in quotes, perfect setup. If you want to improve your aim using Aim Labs, uh, I would say kind of visualize that task in the game that you actually play. So it's like a scenario. And whenever you actually play the game and you envision that task that you're doing and you're able to apply it inside the game, that's when you're gonna see improvement in your aim or just in general play. So my transition from Overwatch to Valorant obviously was super easy. Uh, the game is a tactical, a tactical shooter and uh, Overwatch is like an FPS MOBA in a way, so the aiming in the game is a lot different. For me, at least, the aim in Overwatch is a lot more raw aim, which is basically kind of, there's no limitations, it's kind of just, you have good tracking, you have good flicking, you have just anything. As long as your crosshair is on them and you're tracking them well, you can get like a kill or two or do good damage. In Valorant, uh, your movement plays a large factor in your aim. So I actually had to, I ended up changing my whole setup. I used certain mouse and grip for the longest time. But now since I'm playing Valorant, I use a different mouse, different grip, and whatever feels more comfortable for me in that moment. Because I feel like there's a lot a lot less raw aim in this game and more uh, kind of placement and, and short, like, micro flicks. 
My favorite frame ups tasks to play bridge shots. That's what I use my stream most of the time. Personally, I just like kind of how the rhythm of the game kind of is. It's like you kind of get lost into it and you get to like a flow state sometimes when you're using it. I mostly use it to like warm up my wrist and get my like blood flowing in my arm and stuff like that just because you kind of shoot and flick a lot. Outside of that, uh, I've only actually used like maybe two tasks from it that I think are really helpful for me when I play the game is I do grid shot and I do the sphere tracking. To start off everything, personally, I just want to start off like, for me and aiming, uh, you should always kind of have your position on your mouse. So like, for me, I always have, I'm out maybe, I don't have my elbow on the table ever, but I'll always be a little bit close. So I'm about here on my mouse pad and I'll just have it just rest in the same spot whenever I play. And I'll always remember that well, for me, it's I'm always next to the G. So like I have my specific spot that I play in and I always have my my field of motion that I like bring to myself. Like, I always like probably sit around here unless like for whatever reason a jet's like dashing out above me. So I can just do slight movements. But for the most part, I kind of stay in this area of my mouse pad and I'll always be here so it feels consistent. To kind of get into my grip and my mouse, personally, I'm using a super light and that's just because I mean, I like the shape of it, and it's kind of grown on me over the, over the uh, time I've spent using this mouse, and it's like, I don't know, it feels pretty good to me nowadays. I think beforehand, I was not a big fan of lighter mice. Starting now, I'm definitely, I'm definitely been keen to using it a lot more, but to get into my grip a bit, I kind of, I kind of use like a palm, but I don't like rest my fingers flat like this. Uh, I'll typically have my fingers a little bit curled on the top here for my pointer fingers, which kind of gives me more uh, room to use my fingertips a little bit if I end up having to, but uh, just keep it really steady into my palm like this and have my fingers, my side fingers straight. And I have my thumb not really curled, but a little bit pointed in. And I basically want to like kind of create a stable sides for my mouse. So it, it just kind of stays steady and consistent throughout. For the most part, I don't really death grip my mouse. I'll like keep a firm grip on it just so like you're not holding it too tight but you're not holding it too soft either it's just so you have more more leeway to your flicks also the, the tighter you hold your mouse the more your wrist tightens up too obviously cause strain over time that's like mostly about my grip i kind of just i kind of have big hands so some people might have like a smaller more interesting grip if you're looking more so of less stability and more movement obviously if you want to do a, a claw grip or something like this kind of holds your mouse you'll feel a lot faster and quicker but I think you personally for me at least I lose a lot of accuracy doing this but you'll, you'll feel a lot faster in game that's why I use it I usually stick with the really steady consistent hold on my mouse kind of get into my sitting posture and everything like that for okay so I'm big on keeping the same setup as much as possible so I actually like kind of match my chair height slash desk to kind of like reach up a certain part of like my chest in a way. Like I have like a specific spot that I that I like will slightly rest against the table when I play. And I like slightly lean in when I play just because I have my monitor about like an arm's length away and like hand for my just for my face. So I'll like slightly lean in just a little bit just so it kind of makes me feel like I'm in the game in a way. It kind of sounds funny but it, it is what it is. I think any sensitivity that you use, unless it's absurdly high or absurdly low, uh, the player should be using both their arm and their wrist for certain movements. So I think a good way to go about it is, obviously if, if somebody's really close to you, you're not gonna use your wrist too much if you're a low, like a lower sensitivity player, but you're gonna make that adjustment with your arm or, or whatnot, just because they're closer to you, so it's gonna be more accurate. But if somebody's really far away from you, like really, really far away from you, you should be obviously using your wrist. Your wrist will actually give you more uh, precise and smaller micro movements than you would get if you were using like uh, your arm for like every single small movement, just because it's it's more precise. Personally, I like to use two tasks in aim lab specifically because it helps me with my warm up. And I'll use grid shot and I'll use sphere tracking. So I'll start do by doing some grid shot and talking about my, kind of like how I like to aim. Um, this is like a good example of if things are close to you. Like I can do my wrist if something's a little bit close to me, but for the like, 
the longer movements, at least in aim labs, I'm gonna use my like arm for it. But you can like speed up and slow down. Like if you're gonna focus on accuracy, like at least for me, I, I like to focus on accuracy sometimes, just because it kind of gives you a higher score, and it makes you feel you kind of like learn your your distance that you flick. But if you're really going for kind of like endurance, I like to like pick up the pace sometimes, and you get to practice like your speed at least and your accuracy at the same time. Also, it, like I said, it, it like boosts your endurance as you do this. But remember, this is like mostly my warm up. I kind of use this to um, improve my my circulation when I first start playing, and and like also like loosens up your wrist quite a bit. So, I think if I'm if I'm going for like a high score in this, this game's all about like your rhythm. So, I actually will go for I'll think about the accuracy a little bit more here. I won't go as fast, but I'll kind of just like listen to the sound it makes when you like you shoot a shoot a ball. And you kind of want to like make it like a constant flow if like you can hear this. For me, at least, this is what I do. So I focus on accuracy a lot more there, and obviously my score skyrockets. But another way to kind of practice it is you can go for speed. I'm gonna lose a lot more accuracy and a lot more points here, but it might look a lot crazier to whoever's looking on the inside out. I don't really affect my grip that much. I still wanna go fast. I still don't wanna grip my mouse too hard. Obviously I'm gonna try to keep the um, the same grip I can, that I can maintain the entire time. The only thing that kind of sucks about going fast is you kind of have to slightly lift up your... At least I do, I slightly lift up my, my finger. A little bit. Just kind of gives me a little bit more leeway. For my flick. And less tension on my wrist is built up. But yeah, my score is going to take a little bit of a hit here. Just because my accuracy is not going to be as good. So it's not a bad score at all. I was saying earlier, I do like the sphere track, which is this one. And this one is more kind of like, pretty, this is more lax for me, at least. I kind of spend a lot of time doing this sometimes, just kind of chilling. It kind of helps you with like your your small, like micro movements. Because the ball does end up stopping at some point and like turning. This is something I used to be really good at when I played Overwatch. Just because there's a lot of tracking in that game. So you have like track Lucio, D.Va, Winston who's jumping at you and whatnot. But ever since I started playing Valorant, there's a lot less of this. So I like to kind of keep it... I like to keep it uh, fresh in my brain at least. There's nothing like a long string of this noise. <laughs> yeah, a terrible score. But all, through this entire time, you shouldn't be changing up your grip when you're doing these tasks. Try to keep as your 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 position that you hold your mouse, where you play, how you play, as like consistent as you can. Obviously, if you have to like move it and you have to follow along with your your arm, it's gonna be different and it's always gonna it's always gonna change. So for the times you do change, this is where that good practice is for it. But the more you stay in your consistent comfort zone, the better your scores will be. So that's it for me for how to aim like me, aka Corey. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about aiming or maybe you picked up some cool tips uh, from me that you're going to be able to apply to your game in the future. Uh, if you really liked this video, like and subscribe and uh, drop a comment below and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.